Welcome to Bitcoin Stuff. Okay, this video is about Jameson Lopp's tweet. And I talked a little bit about this in my Narnia video, but uh, I want to talk about this specifically because I think it's such a bad attitude. And I, and I want to explain to people why I think that this is an investment pitfall. But first, I want to do a movie review of Beauty and the Beast. I think Beauty and the Beast has genius-level satire in it. It's way better than other Disney films from around that time, like The Little Mermaid or Aladdin. It has a lot of really funny characters. I think Gaston, an excellent satirical character, he is like the man who is just the biggest jerk ever, and nobody notices because they're in awe of his power. But he does all kinds of funny things. At one point, he misses Belle walking past him because he is distracted by his own reflection. And although he sings a duet with her, she is oblivious to his existence, and he is oblivious to the very meaning of the song that she is singing. And upon sensing that the woman with whom he has had an imaginary romance, which has defined his entire existence up until this point, might prefer his male rival... He's really kind and gentle. ...immediately hallucinates a number of crimes to pin on him... The beast will make off with your children! He'll come after them in the night! ...and rouses the mindless townsfolk into attack mode. Counting on Gaston to lead the way! And who can forget the triplets who are utterly indistinguished from one another and who appear to have some kind of weird shared consciousness? But the character I really want to talk about today is LeFou. I just love LeFou. He is amazing. LeFou is always very cheerful. He is Gaston's sidekick. Did you notice he has a different art style than Gaston? Gaston looks like he's solid. LeFou looks like, like he's a marshmallow or something. And he's weightless, too, see? Gaston can pick him up like he's weightless. Gaston can, of course, lift the clone women quite easily. But here it looks like they actually have some kind of weight to them. LeFou is like a floppy man. He's like a man with no substance. And Gaston does this weird thing with him where he just picks him up whenever he feels like it. And LeFou has been trained to go limp every time he is manhandled, like a domestic animal. I remember finding this very disturbing when I was little. <laughs> LeFou can't get away. When Gaston is unhappy, he is consumed with the need to make Gaston feel better, no matter what. Gaston cannot even get rid of him, you see? And he has completely identified with Gaston's emotions. He's like Gaston's rag doll. And Gaston likes to punch LeFou. LeFou is still cheerful every time he is punched. And LeFou doesn't seem to notice. His floppy, marshmallow-like texture and weight represent his personality. He is so in love with the fantasy of the man that he can never be that to think about his own pain and thereby to identify with himself, he would have to accept that he can never be Gaston. Every guy here'd love to be you, Gaston, hey! even when taking your lumps. You see this? He wishes he could be the person punching him. And as a result of avoiding the reality of who he is, he has become the floppy man. And everyone else can treat him like a floppy man. Because if he doesn't see to his own needs, he is like an insubstantial person to everyone else. Poor LeFou. And now I will tell you the story of another floppy man, Jameson Lop. I learned that around the time this tweet was made, Someone threatened him by using the police to raid his house by telling them about a made-up crime. This is obviously very inappropriate because the purpose of money is to invest in the other investors 
And you can't attract good investors if they don't feel like they are free to make whatever financial arrangements are best for them. But you can make fun of them and turn them into a cautionary tale, which is what we are doing today. I'm assuming that this picture has nothing to do with the actual event. The context of this is this came out shortly before Segwit2x. Uh, many people in the core camp uh, believed Segwit2x to be an attack on Bitcoin, and they believed that it needed to be stopped. And the problem is there isn't necessarily a guarantee that you could stop Segwit2x. So I would argue that if Segwit2x had won, it could only have done so by creating value for the Bitcoin investors. But if you think it can win by reducing value in some way, then that would make uh, Bitcoin a bad investment, assuming that uh, it's going to have trouble stopping Segwit2x. So he wants to go out on the front lines, by which I think he means he wants to go out into the market and sell his 2x coins for core coins, because Segwit2x was a fork of the core chain. And he thinks he needs to be loyal to the developers of the core chain. And he thinks he needs to do this in order to ensure that core wins. And he wants to show his conviction because he wants uh, everybody else to follow him and do the same kind of thing. Yours not the reason why, Jamison. But I would argue that an investment can only be good if the people creating it are loyal to the investors. Because why would investors buy the investment if it wasn't going to serve their needs? Therefore, the only way Segwit2x could have won is by adding value for the Bitcoin investors. Unfortunately, Segwit2x was never turned on, so we will never know what would have happened. But I was actually very interested to see what would really happen when it was turned on. So I am actually very open-minded to any future forks of Bitcoin which do not implement replay protection. Now I would furthermore argue that Jameson's actions in the market only could protect the core consensus if he had a real understanding of the market that he was in. So I think that it is only rational for Bitcoin investors to have convictions if they understand the market well enough to know what will really happen. And in that case, they don't actually need to show their conviction because if they really knew more than other people, they would be able to make more money. This goes back to Fork Jester's question about, about why VHS won over Betamax. Not because it was superior in some ideal sense, but because it was good enough for people who matter. So it looks like he thinks it's a good idea for him to attempt to manipulate the market to save his investment, either by selling his core coins completely, which is what would be rational to do if Segwit2x could somehow win in the market without creating value for the Bitcoin investors, or by taking no action, which is what would be reasonable in my case as someone who believes that a fork of Bitcoin could only win by creating value for the Bitcoin investors and who does not wish to get involved in any greater detail. So he thinks he needs to save his leaders from a risky situation by entering a situation that is risky for him. The front line. And if you went out into the market thinking that showing your conviction was going to affect the outcome in some definite way, then you'd be wrong. Just like you'd be wrong if you had predicted that Betamax would win because it has superior technology. I would further argue that his display of conviction demonstrates that he does not understand the market. And you cannot manipulate the market unless you understand how other people think. Now I think that Jameson Lopp is kind of thinking that the conflict between the core chain and the Segwit2x chain is going to be kind of like an election. 
and if he sells the Segwit2x coin for the core coin, that is a vote for the core, the core chain. And that is kind of true. And I would say there is a very rough analogy between these two things. But there is a very big difference, which is that elections follow clear rules, whereas the market does not. And there is no reason that anything you do in the market is going to have any particular effect. If you don't understand the market, then you can be negated. So showing your conviction does not necessarily do anything. The only way that what you do is going to have an effect is if you can predict what, what is going to get bigger. Because if you, if you buy what gets smaller, then that just destroys your ability to have any future effect on anything. Well, first of all, let's say that Segwit2x is objectively better in some way, just for the sake of argument. In that case, Jameson's vote does nothing because someone who really understood that it was objectively better would be willing to risk more in order to earn more. Now I think the real world is different from that case because I actually think that the value of money comes from the network effect. So money is a bunch of investors investing in one another. And that means that the best money isn't necessarily the one with the, the better objective properties. It's just the one that the investors have settled upon. So it may be that Jameson would have accomplished something by what he's doing. Because if he could convince other investors to settle on the core chain over the Segwit2x chain, even if it was for bad reasons, then the core chain would become the preferred money of the investors, which would make it the better money. However, Jameson is still being irrational because it appears like he's talking about taking an investment action because he has conviction, not because he really knows anything about the future. I would say that good investors usually don't have conviction and are very skeptical of all of their own decisions. And this attitude is necessary in order to be a survivor. And anyone who is behaving irrationally can be negated by the market. If you think you can manipulate the market by behaving in some kind of predictable way, you're going to be manipulated. You're going to be negated. See, because what if I figured out Jameson Lopp's emotions, and I figured out how many people there are thinking like him, and how many bitcoins they have, and I jumped into the market on the day Segwit2x came out, and I started figuring out when the Jamesons jumped in. Well, then I can negate their effect on the market by understanding how they're thinking. You'd expect a big drop in the, the Segwit2x over the Bitcoin index fund price. Because if I know when they're about to enter, I can take a short position. And if I can figure out when they're leaving the market, when they're running out of money, then I can take a long position in, said the Segwit2x coins. So if I can figure out when the Jamesons are done, when they're out, of, when they're, they're going to be out of Segwit2x coins, and so they're going to be done having any effect on anything at that point, then I can start buying. Because now I know that the market is going to adjust to the exit of the Jamesons. And there's going to be a new uh, temporary equilibrium that's going to be established. And I may not know much about the new equilibrium, but what I do know is that a lot of easily manipulated people are leaving who think that they are going to have an effect on the outcome by showing their conviction and who think they can manipulate the market. And these people are dragging the Segwit2x price down. So when they leave, the market is going to be adjusting to that. It's going to be adjusting to a bunch of irrational people who are dragging the price down. So it's probably going to go up after that. Okay, so if I can figure out when the Jameson behavior is going to, to finish, then I can buy the Segwit2x coins right then. It doesn't matter if it loses in the end. If I understand how the Jamesons think, 
and I can predict their behavior, I can negate their effect. I can just take their money, and it doesn't matter what conviction I have, I can, I can do that. And at the end of the day, the Jamesons have grown smaller, and I have grown bigger. So whatever my conviction is, I have a bigger effect on the outcome as a result of their irrational behavior. So you are influential by your ability to predict what is going to get bigger. And if you are making decisions not on that basis, then you are open to being manipulated. So the, the core SegWit2x conflict is not like an election. In an election, you get one vote no matter how dumb you are. In the market, it's like you have more votes if you have more money. And you can take votes from other people if they're irrational. If you're the smartest person, you can get all the votes. And your votes can be taken from you if you're irrational. As long as somebody else understands how you're thinking. But there is a similarity to an election, and that is that you should probably stay out of it. Because most elections are a waste of time, since one vote counts for so little. But in this case, you might want to stay out because you don't want to get negated by manipulators. So I think that Jameson is kind of like LeFou. Because LeFou is attuned to Gaston's needs, but not to his own. Because I think he is failing to frame the choice in a way that best serves his own interest. He's like a limp, empty sack. And I made another video called Strategy in the Core Cash Conflict, where I said that people who are easily manipulated are like Gollum, and people who are good at manipulation are like Sauron. And I said that because the core side doesn't have strong investors among them, that they can be tempted by the ring of power, like Gollum, into doing stupid things. And I think that Jameson is similarly easily tempted, because he has been tempted by the ideology of the core consensus to the extent that it overshadows himself. And this is a problem because in order to make a good investment, you need to enable investors to serve their own bottom lines. So if I figure out the psychology of the Jamesons, then I can negate their effect on the market. I like how he's unhappy here. Like he just noticed that the ring had betrayed him like there wasn't anything wrong when he was falling hundreds of feet below. Now the reason I think this is such an important topic is, well, remember where I said that the purpose of money is to invest in the other investors? Well, someone who can be negated isn't a very good investment, is he? If the core chain has people holding it who can be as easily manipulated as this person, then that makes the core chain look like not such a good investment. Because if you want to buy the new money, you would prefer the new money that has the best other investors. And it doesn't mean that the core chain is going to lose, because I am certainly not able to take the impression that I get from my standpoint and come to any definite conclusion about it. But I think that it would make for a better money if people like this were replaced by people who were not so easily manipulated, which would be an extra bonus if SegWit2x had won. Now I made another video called The Benefits of Being Diversified, where I said that somebody who fights on the front lines, like Jameson, is a gladiator, and someone who, someone who, who sits back and watches is a senator. And I don't think there's anything wrong with being a gladiator. What I think is wrong here is that I don't think Jameson understands the market. And if you want to be a gladiator, you have to understand something about the market. And that's how you win. Your, your understanding of the market is, is your weapon. To me, Jameson does not look like a gladiator. He looks like, like Christians versus lions. And he's the Christian. Jameson. Fight for your philosopher kings, Jameson. Go to the front lines, Jameson. Go put yourself in a risky situation to take us out of a risky situation, Jameson. And, and, and obviously this, this behavior is nonsensical, 
no matter where you see it. It's not like the core camp is the only one with lunatics in it. I think the Bitcoin index fund is pretty much the most sane place to be. Now, the effect from the standpoint of a Bitcoin investor of the creation of a fork is to give them an option to change the rules of Bitcoin. And people who always sell their forks for their core chain are in effect saying that they never want options. And the core team is smarter than any possible option that anyone could give them. So that is the definition of a cult member. If you ask me, cult members say, I don't want options, I want leaders. You try to give me an option? Great, that's a way to get more core coins. Because they're better than options. To the extent that options given to the Bitcoin investors are treated as a tax, the core camp repels strong investors. The very people that you would want to find if you were looking to invest in a new money to lend stability to the system. And Gaston is not a strong investor because he doesn't know how to cooperate. If you were to put him in a group of people who knew how to cooperate, he would be an outcast. In his society, everyone simply identifies with him so strongly that he never has to act cooperatively. But strong investors want to cooperate with other strong investors and they're going to prefer having options over having leaders. And we attract cult members because only a cult member would believe that an option is an attack. Cult members are not good people to invest in no matter how good their leaders are. No matter how good at programming their leaders are. This is the Emperor of Bitcoin speaking. The money can't be strong if the investors aren't strong. And the money must serve the investors in order to attract strong investors. You can't be like this if you're an investor. At least not for long. You need to want agency. That's what money is for. Now stop being a cult member. So I don't know how prevalent Jameson Lopp's attitude is. Maybe he's just the only one. Maybe, maybe there is nothing wrong. But if everybody on the core side doesn't know how to be an investor, then that's going to make me not want to invest in them. Because I don't want to invest in people who don't know how to be investors. See, there he goes again.